So, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, um, my dear colleagues. Uh, I'm really happy today to have a session on CKT Young Learners, um, and I will do my uh, I will do my best to uh, create a quite secure and uh, friendly atmosphere during our talk, and I hope uh, you will uh, participate actively because I can't see your faces, and for me as a YLE teacher, that's a real problem. Uh, I hope you will um, chat in the chat box with me. Um, so today we're going to talk about TKT uh, Young Learners Test, and um, I'm going to give the um, short introduction. And of course, um, we will do some practice tasks um, and have a look at all the components. Uh, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, so we are going to have a look at the introduction of uh, TKT Wiley test, the resources you can use for your self-preparation. Uh, I will give you the review uh, of all the main parts of the test. And uh, I will suggest to you some practice tasks and activities you can do during our session, and then probably you can use them at home. Uh, let's move uh, to the very first slide. Um, so as a way lead teacher, I love uh, greetings in the classroom, and I would like to ask you, how are you today? Can you quickly uh, put some of your ideas in the chat box? How do you feel? Are you crazy today or are you excited and you are happy or maybe you're tired, exhausted after your uh, school day? I see perfect, Marina. Thank you. Wonderful. Wow. Okay. Yeah, some people are tired. Me too. Yeah, because we had classes in the morning. Oh, I see <laughs> some crazy faces. Oh, some people are hungry. Wow, wonderful. Uh, so I see that we have lots of people from different places, and I hope uh, I will be useful today, even if it's um, evening in your place. Wow, super smile, fantastic. Well, uh, as a true Wiley teacher and Wiley trainer, I love chants, and I sing chants with my uh, children and I sing chants with the teachers during different um, sessions. And I also prepared for you a chant about TKT Wiley course. Uh, I'm going to sing it and please in the chat box, can you put some up or some down? So if you agree, you put some up. If you can't agree with a statement, you put some down, okay? Ready, steady, go. Tiki T Wiley is easy and fun, easy and fun, easy and fun. Tiki T Wiley is easy and fun. I'm not scared. Oh, I see. So, can you please put some up or some down? All right. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Tiki T Wiley exam is easy and fun. Uh, and you shouldn't be scared of it because you don't need any compulsory courses to take this test, uh, this exam. And uh, you can even um, have your self-preparation because uh, you can find lots of plenty of resources, uh, read lots of books. And it just depends on you. If you're ready to work with young learners, you can easily take this exam. Okay, the next one. Tiki T Wiley has 80 questions, 80 questions, 80 questions. Tiki T Wiley has 80 questions. Oh, that's easy. Woof, woof. Can you put some up or some down? All right. I see. Fantastic. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I see your reaction. Good. Tiki T Wiley test is a timed pencil and paper test. Uh, that is featuring 80 multiple choice questions. So that's not not much, I think, not many of them, yeah? So we can cover them because we are strong uh, and wonderful teachers of young learners. Okay, let's move to the next one. Tika T. Wiley is testing my subject knowledge, testing my subject knowledge, testing my subject knowledge. Tika T. Wiley is testing my subject knowledge. I don't care. So what do you think? Is it sum up or sum down? Hmm. Ah, so do you really think that Tiki Tiwai Lee 
is testing your knowledge of English. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see, Irina. Ekaterina, right? Uh-huh. Right. Yes, that's right. So, TKT Wiley test doesn't check your subject knowledge, uh, your proficiency in English, yes? So it gives you the theory and some of the approaches you can use uh, during your Wiley classes, right? So we don't really care, but we care, of course. <laughs> okay, so the next one, TKT Wiley can refresh my teaching knowledge, can refresh my teaching knowledge, can refresh my teaching knowledge, TKT Wiley can refresh my teaching knowledge. That's amazing. So what do you think? Sum up or sum down? Yes, yeah, I see lots of yes. Right, very good. Yeah, so TKT Wiley is suitable for the teachers who already work with young learners, for experienced teachers as well, if you want to refresh your knowledge. And of course, um, it's also good for those teachers who work with older learners or even adults, but would like uh, to try uh, and take Wiley classes, yes? Yeah? So anyone can take Wiley, uh, TKT Wiley test. Okay, thank you. So the next one, TKT Wiley is checking my classroom performance, checking my classroom performance, checking my classroom performance. TKT Wiley is checking my classroom performance. I'm really nervous. So what do you think? Does anyone uh, check our classroom performance? Uh-huh, so I see, yeah, no, no, mm-hmm, right. Yeah, so nobody's going to come to your class and observe you, yeah? So TKT Wiley test gives you some knowledge, some theory, strategies, and approaches that you can use in your Wiley classroom. Mm-hmm, that's right, you, so we shouldn't be nervous, <laughs> not at all, right. And the last statement, which is here, TKT Wiley is recognized around the world, recognized around the world, recognized around the world. TKT Wiley is recognized around the world. I'm not joking. So what do you think? Uh -huh. Right, right. Yeah, so that's a true statement. And TKT Wiley is very popular all around the world. I know that even in China, lots of teachers need to take TKT Wiley uh, exam and in Europe. And um, yeah, that's true. That's true. It's well known all around the world. Okay, thank you. You are my wonderful teachers. You participate really actively. Thank you very much for your support. Okay, now let's move to uh, from Chan to, <laughs> to the talk. Um, so, um, TKT Wiley test um, doesn't expect you to take any compulsory courses. And you can easily prepare for the TKT Wiley uh, at home uh, and um, uh, cambridgeenglish.org uh, website uh, provides you with plenty of resources. So uh, they have handbook for teachers, uh, they have test sample papers and other tra training notes. Uh, they are created for uh, the trainers or tutors, yeah, but you can easily use them uh, for your preparation and have a look at the tasks uh, by yourself. Um, and uh, what I strongly recommend you uh, before you start preparing for TKT Wiley course, uh, of course you study the handbook for teachers. That's the wonderful thing uh, that uh, gives the summary of most of the books for uh, teachers, how to teach young learners and so on, because um, they uh, suggest you some information about uh, children, why they need to learn English and how we can help them. Them. And of course, it gives the uh, full picture of all the components of TKT Wiley uh, tasks. Uh, and um, this is the first thing you have to read before you start doing some uh, practice tasks. And of course, to uh, refresh your knowledge of teaching, uh, you can use um, TKT Glossary. Uh, that's the wonderful thing um, with lots of lots of definitions, which are also useful for uh, TKT Wiley uh, tasks. And some of the uh, things you can find on the internet, uh, for example, on uh, Word World Maps and Quizlet.com, uh, some of the uh, um, 
uh, dictionaries and some of the tasks that have been created by other uh, teachers and um, tutors, um, and they are on public, so you can uh, also add them to your account and use and refresh your knowledge. Uh, I'm going also to recommend you some books, uh, but they're going uh, to be in the end of our session. Okay, so um, we have lots of things. Just uh, find them, download them, and um, use them on your computer. Well, so let's move to the structure of Tikiti Wiley test. Tikiti Wiley test has got uh, 80 questions, as I said, but um, uh, also it has got four parts. Um, the first part uh, describes some uh, knowledge of young learners and some principles of teaching them uh, English. Uh, part four um, also uh, part four is about uh, sorry I'm just looking at chat box. Uh, part four is about planning uh, some ideas and strategies to plan um, class for young learners uh, and uh, preparing for the lesson. Uh, part three is about uh, teaching our strategies uh, for teachers, yeah, and how we can um, deal uh, with young learners and uh, with classes. What can we use? And part four is about assessing uh, young learner learning, uh, some purposes, the focus of assessment, and of course, our actions on uh, assessment. Uh, today, we're going to look at all of them. Um, so be ready to work. Uh, and we move to uh, this again, four parts. So you can see in the boxes here, the four parts of uh, TKT Young Learner uh, Test. And uh, on the right, you can see with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, you can see some of the components. Can you please think for some minutes and uh, match the parts of the test with the components? Can you put your ideas in the chat box? Okay. Okay, waiting for your ideas. So think which of the areas of teaching knowledge you can match with the path of the TKT Young Learner test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I see. Samantha's right. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's easy lesson planning about lesson plans and additional resources. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, you have wonderful answers. Have you been preparing before our session? <laughs> okay. All right. I see. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Wonderful. Okay. Let's have a look at the correct answers. Uh, yeah, most of you were right, and I still see your uh, answers. Uh, for example, part one, which is about uh, children characteristics as language learners, and developing children's learning cognitive and communication strategies. Uh, part two is about lesson planning, different resources, uh, additional resources, course books that we usually use for uh, Wiley Classroom. Um, part three is about managing young learners in class, our teaching strategies and the stuff like this. And number four, yeah, about different types of classroom-based assessments. Yes, that's right. Wow, wonderful, wonderful students today. <laughs> okay, so let's move to part one. Um, here it is. And before uh, I start telling you some of my ideas, I want you um, to close your eyes and remember yourself a six-year-old child and try to answer some questions which you can see on the slide. So for example, the first one, can you remember, what was your typical day like? Who did you interact with most often? What activities did you do at home, after school or before school? And what subjects did you like at school and why? So I'm really interested in the last question. 
So when you are ready to share your ideas, can you put some of your memories uh, on our chat box and share your favorite subject at school and in a couple of words say why you like the subject? Okay. Okay, so if you didn't go to school at the age of six, just remember you at the age of seven, for example. Oh, I see. Uh huh. Playing Barbie, yes, fantastic. Uh huh. Games, right? Uh mm huh. -hmm. Right. Very good. Yeah, so lots of wonderful ones. You have all. You all have different answers. Fantastic. Okay. Read books, playing with toys, mm -hmm. physics. Ooh, I was scared of physics. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. drawing, wonderful. Cooking stuff, wow, great. Uh huh. Right, so um, when I have the new group of young learners, I usually ask this question and try to uh, analyze their behavior and uh, try to uh, find the right activities for them. Why? Because uh, it is very important to understand what your students like and with uh, how are they going to work in the classroom, yeah? Um, most of you said that you liked physics or literature because the teacher was wonderful, yeah. So uh, your students will like English if you are wonderful. How to become wonderful? Just try to satisfy all their needs, yeah? Uh, the young, young learners uh, at the age of six, seven, eight, and even nine, uh, they love talking to each other, yeah? So they love um, playing games. Uh, they love pretending as uh, they are, I don't know, animals or some other um, popular, now, nowadays, yeah, popular people from TikTok or Instagram. Um, and of course, uh, they love the teacher who is always smiling, who is happy to see them. So it is very important before you start uh, the class, before you start uh, teaching young learners, just uh, remember all of these questions and try to answer them, yeah? Try to um, analyze your uh, students. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's have a look at the next one. Who are young learners? Uh, they are not aliens, for sure, <laughs> but sometimes I think they are from another planet. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, can you put any adjectives that can describe young learners? Who are they? What do you think? Who are they? Are they bored? Are they tired? Mm -hmm. Energetic creatures, yes. Curious, fantastic. Inventors, woo, jolly, creative, explorers, that's true. Mm -hmm. Noisy, yes. <laughs> Pretty, fantastic. Uh -huh. Bright persons, right? Okay, amazing, fantastic. Dreamers, all right. Yeah, imagination works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Talkative, mm -hmm. right? Friendly. Individuals, yeah, that's very important. I love this. Mm -hmm. Okay, unique. Oh, yes, <laughs> they are. Okay, yes, right. Uh, you know, I put some of the adjectives. Uh, that they found in a couple of books, and all of their authors describe uh, young learners uh, this way. And here you can see all of their main characteristics that you can find in most of uh, psychological things or uh, teaching books and so on. Uh, so, you are right, they are quite energetic. Ah, I forgot to say, uh, some of the characteristics can be positive and negative, yes? Yeah? But uh, we are teachers uh, should put the negative aspect into positive one, yes? Yeah? Uh, so, for example, uh, you can see and you were right that um, all the kids are quite energetic. They cannot sit for a long uh, time, yes? Yeah? Uh, they are quite noisy. Uh, they love playing, they love moving, um, they love standing, dancing, and so on. Uh, of course, they are curious, and they have natural curiosity. Uh, the world is the new place for them, and uh, they want to explore it, even in the classroom, even, even with the English teacher. And we can provide them with such uh, possibility yeah, to explore the world through language. 
Um, they are spontaneous. Uh, it means that they are not afraid to speak out. They are ready to talk. Uh, they are good imitators of language. Uh, and um, they are ready to participate in role plays, games, songs, and so on. Of course, they are unique, yeah. So they love talking about themselves. They are centered on themselves and uh, of their on their immediate surroundings. So that's why um, it's quite important for them to uh, provide them with the opportunity to share the emotions, to share the ideas right now in the classroom with you, with uh, the classmates. Um, they are social, yeah, they love uh, talking to their friends, sharing ideas, I don't know, watching TikTok together and so on. Um, they are imaginative, right, they enjoy make-believe, they love role plays, uh, they love activities that encourage their imagination, and of course, they have a very short attention span. <laughs> uh, nobody will uh, listen uh, uh, to me, for example, talking uh, uh, like this in the classroom uh, because they need to participate and they're easily distracted, of course. Um, they cannot concentrate on longer activities, yeah, if they are not especially fun and interesting to them, yeah? Okay. Um, I'm going to share the link with you. I'm going to put it in uh, the chat box. Uh, and um, if you follow the link there, uh, you will find um, the task for uh, practice task for TKT Young Learner Test. Uh, I would like you to, um, to match the children's characteristics with the, uh, one second, with, um, the activities you can use in the classroom, okay? Just give me a second. Yeah, so here it is. I put it on chat box, okay? Just click on it. Yeah, it's here, okay? So um, tap the link and do the task, please, okay? So you have like a couple of minutes, okay? So we match characteristics with classroom activities. There is no link. Um, in the chat box. Just before your message. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Right. Okay, so when you're ready, just let me know. Um, maybe put a plus or a smile or something like this. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Did somebody don't? Uh. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, let me. I see that. Uh huh. Uh. There is a link. Uh. You can uh follow the link and do the task. Yes. I put it one more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I see you have the results. Fantastic. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. All correct. Yeah. I, uh, by the way, I will uh, see your answers. <laughs> yeah. Later. Not now. 
Uh, yeah, so here you can see uh, the correct answers. Um, so uh, children are quite egocentric and they're centered on their ideas. And so what we can do, just encourage students to personalize new information and the language. Uh, yeah, so that's why we usually ask them to talk about their family or about uh, their interests about their past as well. Yeah, so everything uh, which concerns. Uh, as for the uh, short attention span, uh, we can uh, capture students' attention with brightly colored pictures, photos, videos, sounds. Uh, you know that uh, on uh, most of um, on um, Apple Store and uh, uh, Play Market, you can find a very nice application which is called Soundbox. I just put it here, Soundbox, Soundbox. Yeah, so it's absolutely free. Uh, you can see it in the chat box. It's absolutely free, and uh, you can um, put it. Uh, you can download it and use it in the classroom. It has very uh, nice sounds that you can use for attracting the attention. Um, as for the energetic and physically active, um, um, they are, we use kinesthetic activities like uh, TPR uh, games and, uh, uh, for example, here you can see Simon says or true false sentences when uh, they, uh, when you say something and they have to clap their hands or maybe stomp their feet or maybe jump and so on. Um, of course, uh, they are social, yeah, and they love learning together. So we make interactive tasks, uh, group games, uh, cooperative activities, competitive activities, games, and so on. Uh, so for the uh, characteristic of uh, children being imaginative, and uh, we use role plays, pretend games, like for example, animal charades, or we uh, act out stories, for example, and so on. Uh, for the curiosity, I love playing mystery bag. Uh, when you know when they close their eyes and you have a bag with something inside, and they put their hand uh, hands inside and they touch something and need to guess what is it. So usually uh, we play it with um, toy animals or when we uh, learn school stationaries like eraser, rubber, ruler, and so on. Uh, and uh, for uh, characteristics that the children are spontaneous, not afraid to speak, we use songs, rhymes, chants, and dialects because children are great imitators, yes, so they are ready to speak even if they do not understand every word, which is okay. Uh, they remember the language and they use it, uh, so that's wonderful, right? Okay, thank you very much. Don't be sad if you don't have all the correct answers. Uh, I'm sure you will. Uh, you can do this activity one more time, and maybe uh, the next time you um, have better results. Okay, fantastic. Well, let's move to the strategy. Um, what kind of strategies we have to be aware of while preparing for the test? Uh, so we have to know that uh, there are the main strategies um, of uh, learning language, yeah? Uh, so there are learning strategies, cognitive strategies, and communication strategies. So as for learning strategies, um, there are the ways in which students learn, remember information, study for the test, uh, review the information, and so this is, these are specific ways the learners choose to cope with language, yeah? in particular context, for example. Uh, as, for, uh, cognitive, uh, as for cognitive strategies, so that's everything um, about um, learning styles, uh, like, uh, you know, visual, auditory, physical, social, um, uh, so what do we have? Solitary, verbal, logical, so everything about this. And communication strategies, they are uh, kind of, they are ways of learning how to share the information. Uh, we'll have a look at them. Okay, again, I have the link. Uh, just try to um, follow the link. One second. Mm -hmm. And group uh, their uh, strategies and the examples of the strategies, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep, here it is. I'll go. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, just around the learning strategies, everything about the way uh, the children learn language, yeah, cognitive uh, strategies, um, so about, uh, about some ways uh, the children use uh, for, um, for coping with language, and communication strategies, they are everything about language. So we have a question here. Can you send the link again, please? Yes, sure. Oh, thank you. I don't know who does this, but every time Cambridge Assessment English um, shares the link. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Okay. I also open it on my computer. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So learning strategies, cognitive strategies, communication strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know it may be a bit more difficult, but try to think logically. I think for communication strategies, it's quite um, easy. <laughs> and for learning strategies and cognitive, yeah, maybe you have to think. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, one more minute, and then you are back, okay? All right, fantastic. Uh-huh, wonderful. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. So you can see your results, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh huh. Yeah. So I can share the correct answers uh, on the next slide. Uh, here uh, you can see the examples of learning strategies of everything um, uh, which uh, we can, um, which uh, our students uh, do to uh, learn language. Yeah. So. They are setting learning objectives for themselves, selecting activities, using uh, reference resources, remembering language, uh, contrasting, reviewing, and comparing. Yeah? Uh, as for cognitive strategies, we can see here the examples of predicting, categorizing, scanning, risk-taking, matching, scheming, and sequencing. Uh, I know that yesterday we had the um, CKT CLEAL right, session, and I think uh, most of the strategies, cognitive strategies, were discussed there. As uh, for communication strategies, you can see describing appearance. So it's more about language, yeah? Describing appearance, asking for an object, expressing a reason, asking for clarification or help, describing an action, asking for permission, attracting someone's attention. So all of these examples, they, they have more of them, yeah? So they're just uh, the past. Of the strategies, but uh, the whole list of the strategies you can find on uh, Handbook for Teachers, and uh, uh, of course you have to read about them, yeah, to understand uh, and to uh, use them uh, actively um, uh, for your uh, lesson preparation. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, you you made the first step, yes. Yeah? That that is your first step. Uh, for while well, preparation. Don't be sad, please. Don't be sad. So everything is fine. Uh, you are doing well. Okay. So um, thank you. So this is so the this is the first part of the test. Yeah. So characteristic and learning strategies. So that's something that you have to learn and you have to read about. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the question box here, yeah, and we will. Uh, I, I'm going to answer them uh, because now I move to part two, and part two of 
uh, TKT and Learner test uh, covers uh, the next uh, areas. So this is lesson planning, uh, the components, the headings of the lesson plan, and I should say they are quite useful. Um, providing uh, support and challenge when selecting and using course books and supplementary material. So everything about uh, program, I mean syllabus, you can use uh, maybe some of the ideas to skip in the course book or to pay attention on or add some material. And of course, additional resources that we use in the classroom. Um, uh, the list of them you will see later. Okay. So, and we start with the easiest thing, things, I think. Um, so, here you can see uh, the two basic components of part two. Uh, there are additional resources and there are um, some of the components of providing support and challenge um, while uh, choosing course books, yeah? Uh, talking about uh, the materials. Um, that we use in the classroom, uh, I mean, course books and other things. Um, what can we do? We can add visual support uh, during our classroom. So this is during our, during our classroom, their classes, oh my gosh. Uh, they are flashcards, they are pictures, they are photos. Uh, there are also some videos, yeah, um, you can find on the internet. Uh, adding word bank. Uh, so that's everything about uh, dictionaries, creating uh, picture dictionaries with your friends, uh, creating interactive um, um, copy books with them, and so on. Uh, of course, some of the ideas you can uh, omit unnecessary details, yeah, because sometimes you can skip uh, some parts of the course or again. Uh, you can pay attention to some of them and spend two or three lessons, yeah? Because some of the topics are quite challenging for kids. Uh, of course, that's about simplifying your language. It depends on the level of students you're working with. Um, uh, personalizing content, that is very important, yeah? So you remember that our the children are unique and they love sharing their uh, personality. And of course, adapting tasks here. Yeah? So how can we adapt the tasks from the course book? What can we do if, for example, some students are weak, some students are strong, what can we do? Maybe you need some, um, maybe you need uh, to pre-teach some materials before the uh, task, yeah? Uh, so all of these things are quite important. And uh, for, Talking about additional resources, uh, you can see here nice, exa nice examples uh, of them. There are stories, uh, there are games, plenty of games. Uh -huh. Yeah, can teaching be part of support? Yes, sure. Uh, we use flashcards uh, with young learners. I, I, I think uh, teenagers uh, do not uh, need them a lot, but I think they need. Um, Young learners, yeah, so that's very important. Uh, I start the lesson with flashcards uh, all the time. With flashcards or pictures, you know, uh, I have got uh, the folder of pictures from uh, different magazines. Um, I have a friend who loves buying magazines, and uh, when she doesn't uh, need them, uh, she gives me, and I cut out the pictures. Um, they're quite good for describing um, clothes, appearance, uh, how this may be, yeah, so uh, you can, uh, you don't need even um, to buy them, yeah, you can make your flashcards and they're brightly colored and students love them because sometimes they can see uh, famous people on the pictures, yeah, uh, right, so uh, game, uh, puppets, uh, so young learners are aged, I mean from 6 to 12, yes, from 6 to 12. Um, so puppets, uh, realia, which is very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, last year I worked with Supermind Books only, and they have got a very nice uh, story about uh, two explorers, Ben and Lucy, and two bad people, Horex and Zelda, who were following them and trying to find treasure. And there was uh, a mysterious age. 
um, Horik was a uh, Horik's grandfather was a mysterious age, and um, he uh, was traveling around the world and stealing uh, lots of lots of things from different museums. And to start the lesson, I brought. Uh, the real necklace and the real painting and I said like you know I found them somewhere um, on the street I don't know maybe somebody stole this uh, so when we start predicting what happened why I found this beautiful necklace and the painting on the street and then we moved to the story and children uh, said oh that was mysterious age he stole <laughs> those necklaces so that was quite uh, interesting and uh, it captured students' attention. Uh, so Realia is great for a young learner classroom, for any classroom, I would say. So again, flashcards, pictures, drawings, art and crafts activities, um, especially for uh, some uh, classes like Christmas, Halloween, or St. Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving Day, and so on. Uh, rhymes, songs, chants, um, uh, we have them in the course books, yeah, but sometimes we need more um, rhymes, songs, and chants that you can find on YouTube, on different, on different channels, uh, and so on. And, uh, of course, video clips, um, also wonderful uh, stories you can find on BBC uh, website. Uh, they have got the series of um, uh, BBC uh, Young Learner Stories. Uh, they are quite interesting, and as a dish, as uh, as an additional resource, you can also use them in class. Uh, uh, combination with uh, what is? Oh, I have a nice question. What is the right proportion of using language on? So you know, I do not use uh, I I do not use particular language one, uh, but you know, there are some situations when you have to do this. Uh, so usually it is connected with the discipline or uh, when um, when students cannot understand uh, the word or grammar or something like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we will come back to this question uh, in the end of the session. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, so uh, part two. Uh, the main focus of part two on planning. And here you can see uh, eight um, main components of um, lesson plan. So you can see here learning outcomes. Uh, so their goals uh, you would like your students to achieve by the end of the course or by the end of the lesson, yeah? Uh, to develop their knowledge of language or to develop their skills. So usually uh, when you prepare a lesson, you should think of it. You're like, for example, by the end of this lesson, what your students will uh, take. Maybe they will learn how to, I don't know, how to make a burger, or they will learn how to use present simple, uh, talking about the daily routines or something like this. Um, uh, also, uh, this part covers resources needed. Yeah, some of the resources we can use in the classroom. Uh, possible problems and solutions that may happen. That's uh, everything about uh, the odd number of students or uh, if uh, your CD player doesn't work here, yeah, what, what are you going to do? Um, uh, so it's also differentiation, the process by which teachers can adapt or modify or change uh, their uh, teaching style and methods in order to uh, meet uh, students' needs, yeah? So when you have got um, multiple level, uh, multiple level group, uh, what can you do, yeah? How can you differentiate the tasks? What can you do to help uh, weaker students but satisfy stronger students as well? Uh, of course, interaction patterns, that's about uh, the ways uh, your students work during the lesson. I mean, uh, pairs, individual work, group work, and so on. Uh, of course, syllabus, because uh, sometimes we can be very creative, but we need uh, to understand that our lesson fits uh, the syllabus there, the whole uh, course that your students take for a year or maybe for two years or maybe for two months. It depends on your uh, school and your programs you're working with. Uh, assessment evidence, yeah, like what we're going to focus on. And uh, follow-up suggestions, that's mostly for teachers. Um, 
after the last 10 years, kind of reflection, what can you do uh, to improve your teaching style or maybe to uh, help uh, your learners to get some more results, yeah, better results, I would say. Okay, and here you can see uh, the lesson, uh, lesson plan heading on the left. Assumption, assessment, evidence, differentiation, syllabus, personal teaching aim, procedure. And on the right, you can see teacher's notes. Uh, what I would like you to do, I think you <laughs> have already understood, I would like you to match the lesson plan headings with the teacher's notes. Can you please share your ideas uh, on our chat box? And I'm waiting uh, for your answers, okay? Because very often we make the lesson plan, we have plenty of ideas, but we don't really understand why we do this or what's the purpose. But if we try to analyze it, we have better lessons and our students feel it and they participate in a different way. Yeah, one E, see? Mm -hmm. One E. Are you sure that they have learned something if they use English rather than like for picture cards? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, two E. Yeah, I see the correct answer. Well done. <laughs> yes, Camille is right. Yeah, two E. Fantastic. Oh no, that's uh, that's not a letter. That's uh, the the sentence. One group of children can't read it, so I'll make a set of matching pictures for them. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah. A wonderful answer. Uh huh. I wait in seconds and then give you the clue, the answer. I would say the key. Okay. Uh huh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Okay. So here you can see the correct answers uh, for assumptions. Yeah. So they are kind of problems uh, you even sometimes uh, cannot predict them. Uh, so assumption important because this game might be new for some children. Yeah. So for example, uh, that's something that. Um, uh, that is connected with uh, mostly with uh, managing classroom um, with some of the things uh, that may not work in the classroom or something like this yeah assessment evidence uh, yeah so this is a nice example I'll know if they have learned something if they use English rather than language one for picture class yeah so that's a kind of assessment. So the teacher will analyze while they're doing this activity. Differentiation, uh, that's a, a very clear example. One group of children can't read it, so I will make a set of matching pictures for them, yeah? So and when we speak about a multi-level group, uh, so this is our ability to differentiate the task, to um, uh, adapt them, modify them, change them, yeah? Uh, syllabus, yeah, good. They are doing healthy eating and science, yeah. So your lesson fits the syllabus, yeah. So fantastic. Uh, personal teaching aims. I must try to listen to all the pairs this time. Yeah. Okay, that's clear. And procedure. Explain that they must must pay attention to remember where their words are. Yeah. So this is the part of the procedure of the lesson plan. Of course, that's the short example. Yeah, and while you are um, while you are planning um, uh, your lesson, uh, you focus on all of the eight parts of the lesson plan. So I have a question. Can you please explain why or want to see widely? Okay. So uh, again, assumptions. They are kind of problems uh, that are not connected with the language. 
they are not connected with the material you are going to explain. They are connected with the atmosphere, with the managing of your classroom, yeah, with the devices that may not or maybe not work in the classroom. Um, so, um, did I help you? So they are kind of problems you can take into account, but they are not connected with the with the language itself. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, nice questions. Okay, so as we move further, okay, and I have another task for you, bam, bam. I hope you will have lots of practice today. Okay, uh, again, I'm going to put the link on the chat box and here you can see um, uh, the task, uh, which summarizes uh, part two of CQT and Learner Test. Uh, so here you need to read some statements. Uh, and hold on a second. And choose the correct variant. So you choose A, B, or C. So to get the link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can see the statement about, um, uh -huh. if you follow the link here, yeah, you, you have got the statement about uh, Young Learner Classroom, where you need to choose the correct variant. For example, I often use action rhymes with my classes because it um, helps the children to associate words with meaning, because the words that rhyme, the movement, or the tune. Yeah, so you choose the correct variant. The movement, of course. Yeah, the movement helps the children to associate words with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me know when you finish the task. Uh, there are only seven statements for you. Okay, one more minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, right, right. Okay, well, you're yeah, doing, I also have some uh, questions. Uh, so there was question number two uh, about computer games. Uh, do you usually use computer games uh, in classroom or as a part of homework? Yeah, somebody's asking, aha, uh Kahoot, -huh, right? Somebody's asking the link again. Mm -hmm. Not so often, yeah. Yeah, of course, if uh, you don't have uh, nice devices in classroom, yeah, uh, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Ah, see, British Council, right, okay, good. Yeah, you know, uh, during our um, online classes uh, this summer, or this, this uh, spring, yeah, uh, during lockdown, uh, I used um, wordworld.net uh, very often, uh, and my students love the activities on Wordworld very much, and now uh, they ask, uh, ask for some more activities. We don't do them in the classroom, but I usually uh, send the link uh, to, um, to parents' uh, message. We have got a message with uh, parents. Um, 
Uh huh. So what will next? Yes, I, I'll conclude. Okay. Uh, we we have a um um a chat with the parents, and I usually put the link with the activity um to their parents, and they can easily use um the interactive task at home for revising, for learning new words. Uh, for uh, doing with grammar structures, and I found it quite useful. Um, so please, if you will like it, uh, that's worth doing, I think. Uh, and it it will help you to um, to build a nice uh, rapport with the students, and of course uh, revise uh, their uh, materials or present as well. Uh huh. Okay, Minecraft. I wish I could find some games similar to Minecraft and covering the language needs. All right. By the way, uh, you can. I'm not sure about Minecraft. <laughs> okay, but some of the tasks uh, can be quite similar to Minecraft style, maybe. Yeah, just have a look. Yeah, uh, but you know, uh, there are so many applications nowadays, and uh, some teachers. Um, say like, oh, we're not going to use them, but they work really well in the classroom. So I need, I think we we have to change uh, our personality and our attitude to computers uh, because this uh, the time of digital uh, students and we have to satisfy their needs. Okay, right. Well, uh, so, Thank you for your answers. I see that you have finished. Yeah, you completed. Can you uh, now share your ideas? Uh, did you find any surprising facts in this task? Um, something unusual or something you didn't expect? Or everything is clear, like obvious. Okay. Right. Clear, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think part two is clear, especially if you have, if you are a teacher, yeah, if you have classes, so everything is fine. Okay, thank you very much, fantastic. And uh, now let's move to part three of TKT Young Learner Test. Mm -hmm. And this part uh, focuses on uh, using practice activities in the classroom. Uh, scaffolding children's understanding and use of language, mm. and of course, managing young learners in class. So there's the basic three components, uh, which part three of the test covers and uh, is testing your knowledge of this component. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, practice activities, they are activities that you usually use in the classroom. They are games, tasks that your children like, or maybe sometimes, uh, they don't like them because they're quite challenging. Can you please share your ideas to what kind of tasks and activities you use in the classroom? Or maybe you heard from your colleagues who are working with young learners. Oh, Salmoni, yes, okay. Fantastic. <laughs> I love them. Aha, uh -huh. clever parrot. Mm, that's interesting. Bingo, yes. Uh huh. Making stories. Uh huh. Singing songs. Quizzes, right? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Crossword songs. Mm hmm. Good. Music box. Wow. What am I? Mm hmm. Well play crossword. Uh huh. Okay. Mining games. Mm hmm. Right. Board games. Oh yeah, I love board games. And I love uh, breaking rules of the board games and make my own. Hangman, Simon says, okay, crossbow. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, wonderful, wonderful. Lots of things. Uh huh. TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put the list of the activities on the next slide. So they are activities uh, which you can find uh, during your uh, test preparation. Uh, you were right, so we use lots of memory games uh, for, for example, um, first uh, year students. Uh, we usually um, play memory games with flashcards, yeah, like they close their eyes, we usually close eyes and sing the song like uh, one, two, three, and they open their eyes and they say like what's missing, 
um, I don't know, their cat is missing. Uh, through false activities, different songs, and the, it's good if you uh, learn and sing songs with some movements because it's um, easier for students to understand the language. Uh, do not use language one, of course, yeah, because they um, can see it. Yeah, like for example, in Kids Box 3, there is a nice song uh, with toys uh, when they're singing. Uh, flying a kite, yes, and you say like flying a kite, yeah, or walking like a robot, yeah, or bouncing a ball. So everything is clear when you mime it, yeah. Uh, different CPR activities, um, I um, often search uh, on YouTube, uh, just put CPR activities and lots of teachers and lots of uh, colleagues from all over the world post the videos with different CPR. CPR total, phys total physical response activities. Um, for example, the easiest one uh, is when you, for example, say some facts and uh, the students, um, uh, if, if it's yes, they clap their hands, if it's no, they stomp their feet, or if it's yes, they make a step forward or make the step backwards. Or, you know, there is a very nice uh, CPR uh, game from drama classes. Uh, I sometimes have drama classes. Uh, it's it is called WAVE. Uh, when it's yes, they move to the left. When it's uh, no, they move to the right. So and we are playing uh, the WAVE, yeah? So total physical response starts. Uh, you can uh, nice, you can watch nice videos by uh, Herbert Puchter on um, YouTube, uh, where he uh, gives the introduction to total physical response, uh, and the, the videos are great. They are quite old, but they are fantastic. Um, and um, uh, stories, of course. Um, what can we do with the stories? We use the pictures to tell the stories, or uh, I have got uh, flashcards with different words, and we'll make a one word story when uh, I take the word and say the sentence, and the next student takes uh, a new word and makes uh, the sentence uh, with the new word, and we continue the story. Uh, or, uh, you know, you can also use story cubes. Uh, the uh, nice, um, uh, it's not a board game, but a kind of board game story cube. I put them here. You can find them. Um, you can find them uh, on some uh, online uh, site like Azon or something like this. Um, so uh, the idea is uh, on each part of um, uh, the cube, uh, you have got a picture a character maybe, or an action, and um, uh, you, the students throw the dice, and uh, they, uh, one second, I just uh, looking for a total physical response on YouTube, oh, yeah, here it is. Um, just share the link, okay? Uh, so the students throw the dice, and uh, they tell the story uh, about the pictures that they have uh, on the, uh, dice there, yeah? Okay. Put it here for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, about total physical response. Uh, of course, uh, there is uh, listen and do activities, yeah, like look at me, repeat up to me. Uh, and there is a very nice book, uh, which is also called uh, Listen and Do. Um, you can find this on the internet or buy it. Um, it also gives nice ideas for storytelling uh, with miming and with reading and listening as well, yeah? Uh, all kind of guessing games, brainstorming, uh, of course, role play, uh, surveys, information gap activities, uh, different dictations, drills, and dialects, yeah? And you can, uh, by the way, uh, that's the long list of activities, yeah? Uh, but there are some basic ones that um, I think everyone uses in classroom. Um, let's have a look. Uh, there is a task. Uh, can you uh, read the statement and decide what kind of activity is it? So what is the type of practice activity? After reading the story, the teacher chooses different children to act it out. So what is the activity? Not bingo for sure. <laughs> what is the activity? 
So can you share your ideas? Yeah, uh-huh, I see. Uh-huh, role play, yes, role play. Woo, fantastic. High five, my dear colleagues, role play. Yes, right, right, super. Okay, so the next one. Uh, the teacher tells the children they are going to travel in a spaceship to another planet. In groups, they make a list of things they want to take with them. What is it? Brainstorming, right? Uh huh, good. Perfect. Uh huh. Kind of project, yeah? Can be, can be, why not? Mm hmm. Right. Very good. Uh, drill. Are you sure that it's drill? No, I think it's about uh, like brainstorming, yeah, when students share their ideas. And um, guessing maybe teamwork. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so the next one. Uh, children close their eyes while the teacher removes one of the story sentences from the board. They open their eyes and say which one is missing. Woo, what is the kind of activity? Memory game. Yes, memory game. Fantastic. Super. Mm hmm yeah, wonderful, yeah, mm hmm good, super, you're doing well. The next one, each child has a different version of a picture to their partner. Without looking at each other's picture, they take turns to describe what they see in order to find five differences. <gasps> yeah, I see Natalia is the first one. <laughs> okay, what is it? Uh, I think it's guessing. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's pair work, peer work, right? Oh, I can't say that it's memory game. I think it's information gap. Yeah. Because they find the differences. Yeah, so they have different pictures. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. Right, very good, very good. Okay, and the next one. So what do have? The teacher says the sentence, I gave her a banana, then shows pictures of, for example, a little girl, a man, a mother, a father, a cat. Children have to say the sentences with the correct pronoun for each. I see, Julia is the first. Okay. Yeah, so this is drill. Yeah, fantastic, drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grammar drill. Good, good. Well, you're doing well. Thank you very much. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, now let's move to the next component of part three. So this is scaffolding. And here in the picture, you can see uh, the basic um, strategies, teaching strategies uh, the teacher can use in the classroom. But what is scaffolding? So scaffolding, there are different ways in which teachers support children's learning and understanding through language and action. So that's, that's our support, yeah? That's something that we do to support our children to make their learning fun, um, I don't know, easy, um, but of course challenging at the same time, yeah? So there, this is our support, right? Uh, let's have a look at the task. Here, I see that you are all uh, commenting uh, in the chat box. Uh, look, here we can see uh, the task. I have got the task for you, uh, where you can see teacher's language and teaching strategies. Can you think and match them together? So they're all about scaffolding strategies. You can see here using language at children's level, using language one when appropriate, correcting young learners' language, using varying questions, allowing wait, uh, allowing wait time after asking a question, and varying the delivery of language. Can you please think and match uh, the language with their teaching strategies? Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ba bam! I give you the correct answers. Here they are. So using language at children's level, that's E, creating a clear or familiar context for an activity, yeah? So for example, uh, when you are going to, when, you, when your focus, the, when the focus of your lesson is present simple, you shouldn't take something that your students don't know, yeah? So for example, if you are going uh, to explain this on the basic of jobs and they don't know jobs, yeah? So there are two difficulties. Uh, we shouldn't have them. Uh, but if they're aware of daily routines, like um, brushing teeth, uh, wake up, and so on, it's better to explain present simple uh, on using this context, yeah? Um, number two is A, using language one and appropriate, using visual aids to support language, yeah? So there are word banks, language frames, and so on. Yeah, to avoid language one, you can put some of the uh, language that they may need on the board, on the pieces of paper, I usually do this at the beginning of the year uh, when I put some classroom language uh, next to the board on the wall, or I use some of uh, I put some of the um, questions uh, that your, your students may use, like for example, what's the English for something, yeah, or uh, what's the Russian for something, or can you spell, yeah, the teacher. If the teacher can you spell this please yeah uh, so you provide your uh, students with some uh, language support do not use language one uh, like every minute yeah of course they use it they may that's okay but uh, when you want better results yeah so we have to support them with some language some phrases that they can use uh, correcting young learners, number three is C, uh, focusing on uh, visible objects, actions, and information. Yeah. Uh, number four, using varying question forms like open, closed, and so on. So that's number f uh, that's F, creating opportunities for learning through the five sentences. That's right. Uh, number five, allowing wait time after asking a question. So that's D, revising language children need for a task, yeah? And number six, writing the delivery of language, like speak slowly, quickly, and so on. That's B, demonstrating using a model or example, yeah? So uh, to avoid, again, um, repetition maybe, yeah? Uh, use example, um, use models before the, your students start doing the task. Uh, you um, give them an example, yeah? Okay. Right, very good. Well, the next one, uh, we are moving to classrooms, so, so to managing young learners in class, classroom management. And here is a nice statement about classroom management. Uh, so classroom management refers to the ways in which students' behavior, movement, and interaction during a lesson are organized and controlled by the teacher. Uh, so students love having um, fun in the classroom and they're quite noisy, as you said, yeah? And I agree. Uh, but we have to set uh, a kind of rules, yeah, uh, to use in the classroom uh, and to control all this uh, creativity. Uh, so what is classroom management about? That's about classroom routine. Uh, something uh, you use every lesson, like for example, uh, you start the lesson with the song, hello song, for example, yeah, or you finish the lesson with the song, uh, or sometimes, for example, I finish the lesson with a question ball, uh, when students uh, throw the ball and ask the question on about the material we have learned. Uh, also, my uh, my younger learners, six, seven year old, love playing Humpty Dumpty game. 
uh, we usually play it in the end of the class and they are waiting for this. So that's a, this is a kind of routine. Um, students sitting, yeah, so you can organize uh, the tables in your classroom uh, to put them in a circle if it's alone, uh, the small group, or to put it in the form of the horseshoe. Uh, again, it depends on uh, the situation, um, on your group. Uh, giving instructions here, yeah, and of course, uh, support your instructions with some visual aids. Uh, uh, tell about functionality. Okay, uh, I will, uh, yeah, just in a second. Uh, teacher talking time, yeah, again, uh, it's, very, it's connected with giving instructions. Um, so um, you, you, you have to be careful, yeah, and do, do not give a lecture. Um, drawing and keeping children's attention. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, drawing and keeping children's attention. Uh, here you can use uh, different songs, chants. And you know, uh, on YouTube I found a very nice woman, uh, which is called Dr. One second, Dr. Jean. Uh, I put it on the chat box. Yeah, she has got very nice videos on attention grabbers, attention getters that you can use in classroom or even in uh, your camps summer camp if you work there. She's wonderful. Uh, she has nice songs and they're easy to remember and they're easy to adapt to your classroom. Uh, using correction strategies, interaction patterns, uh, checking understanding and feedback and using whiteboard. So what about the game Humpty Dumpty? Uh, that's uh, when all your students are standing in a circle and they put the right hand on the partner's hand and the left hand Oh, sorry, the, yeah, the right hand on the partner's hand and the left hand under the partner's hand. And they start saying this word, uh, Humpty uh, Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And then uh, they may say the number, like for example, five, yeah? And they start counting like one, the next person, two, three, four. And when it's five, uh, you have to be careful because if your partner um, uh, slept, put, hit, hit your <laughs> hand, uh, you um, you are you are lost. Yeah, and so you are out. Yeah, clap. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. So clap hands. So you are out. Yeah. But if uh, he cannot do this, you win and you stay in a circle. So and you can do this with um, numbers. Uh, but uh, I usually do this with spelling words. So when we have new list of vocabulary, um, uh, I love my students. I love when my students play with spelling. So when they say Humpty Dumpty set on the wall, blah blah blah, and they say, for example, forest, yeah, and they spell the word forest. That's nice nice for them yeah but first you start with numbers it's easy for them and they start uh, and they love the game yeah and after that you say like okay now spell the words <laughs> uh it's more challenging than numbers okay uh so that's about classroom management and i have the new task for you aren't you tired of the task if you're tired just tell me um, and i will stop doing this <laughs> okay Anyway, I put the link. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please follow the link and try to do the task. So that's about uh, part three PPT uh, Young Learner Task. So you can see some statements, like for example, very good, um, very good, try master, but remember to change the order of the words to make a question. So what is it? So this one is correct in language, right? Okay. So please have a practice task and then let me know when you finish.
Uh -huh, right, I see it done. Right, very good. Mm -hmm. Wow, seven out of seven. Fantastic. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Okay. I hope it wasn't difficult. Yeah, I see happy faces. Fantastic. Super. Of course, it's only the the part of uh, this big part of CQC uh, Wiley test, but I would like to give you some opportunities to try it just right now. Not not to talk, but also to try something. How to distinguish class routine and attracting attention. So, do you remember what was the question about, or is just your question? Attention, uh, by the way, okay. If it's not connected with the question, oh, of course, okay. Attention grabbers, attention getters, uh, you can use, uh, you use during the classroom. Mm, they can be a part of your routine, but it's not a routine. Routine is something you do every lesson. Like, for example, every time I come into the classroom, I start singing the song, who's here today, who's here today, everybody clap your hands. Who's here today? Yeah, and they say, Masha is here today. Okay, hello, Masha. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing you do every day. Or for example, uh, I, mm, you, you can also do like you uh, dress up paper dolls according to the weather, which is uh, outside today. Yeah, it's also a nice routine. Attention getters, attention grabbers, they're, uh, they're everything. They're sounds on your mobile, yeah? Uh, they are um, bell, uh, so this can be a bell you can use in the classroom. Uh, it can be um, a song, yeah? It can be, I don't know, um, a mask you put on your face, yeah? Everything you can uh, use to get the attention. I mean, uh, I recommend it to watch uh, Dr. Jean because she has n nice things for young learners. Uh, wonderful, like for example, focus, focus, everybody focus. Yes, yeah, some nice things. Or uh, one idea I saw, uh, not from Dr. Jean, but uh, I think from uh, another website. Uh, it is called Teaching Channel. Yeah, nice website. It's uh, not about, you know, not uh, um, not only about English. Uh, yeah, I put it here. Teaching. I don't. I can't share the link uh, uh, because it's. Uh, it needs time to uh, find it. Teaching uh, channel. Uh, this is the free website about uh, teaching, not only language, but uh, physics, everything. Uh, and uh, they had a very nice video with the box. Uh, just a, a simple box. You put everything inside. So like if you need uh, vocabulary, you put some flashcards. And you start singing the song. I don't have box, I put my uh, notebook. So here, what's in my magic box? What's in my magic box? Oh, what could it be? Just wait and you'll see. What's in my magic box? And your children start also doing this reason with you, yeah, and you repeat it uh, twice or three times. And then uh, that's a real magic for them. You open the box and say, oh, Oh, it's not a frog, yeah? Mm, maybe it's a, and they start sharing the ideas. It's a lorry, apple, I don't know, everything, yeah? Uh, that's a nice thing to attract their attention uh, when they're noisy, when they are um, maybe tired even, yeah? Uh, so they need some magic. Uh, no, teaching, teaching channel, it's not on YouTube, it's a website. I just uh, cannot find it right now. But uh, yeah, during our talk, I will try to uh, find the link on my laptop. Um, 
yeah so she has wonderful things and she also has some nice things for uh rules uh she has nice things like the rules the rules the rules of the classroom the rules the rules the rules of the classroom listen 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 to your teacher listen 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 to your teacher yeah so she has uh yeah oh i see nice uh, somebody uh, somebody put the link. Uh, so Dr. Jean has lots of wonderful things, and you can steal them. Uh, maybe change some words. I do not take uh, just to the original words. I change them uh, to my students' uh, preferences. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, uh huh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Lots of links. Fantastic. Good job. Uh, let's move to part four. Um, but four of CPT and learner test focuses on uh, assessment, uh, purposes of assessing learning, uh, focuses of assessing learning, and acting on assessment evidence. Uh, that's the big basic, the, the big thing. Um, you can read about this a lot, but uh, what I love about uh, assessment that something uh, that the thing that you act. Uh, on uh, assessment evidence, and every time after the lesson, I try to uh, work on uh, reflection and try to understand um, what uh, what was important um, and where I lost my attention, and where um, where maybe some parts I should pay more um, uh, action, yeah, on. Uh, and assess my students. Uh, so, anyway, talking about TKT Wiley, uh, I'll prepare for you some statements uh, about uh, assessment. And I want you to look at them and decide is it uh, true or false. Okay, and I will uh, do my best to, to give uh, some comments. So, the first one. Uh, giving positive feedback at the end of a task can increase motivation. So what do you think? Is it true or false? So you can put plus or minus or uh, TOF. Giving positive feedback uh, at the end of a task can increase motivation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, while you are giving positive feedback, um, so we uh, teachers review target language of course, and the children develop a positive attitude to assessment. You know that in Russia, I think in Russia, yeah, uh, we all have some negative attitude to feedback. It's difficult for us to to listen to feedback, especially when it is uh, when uh, we are given uh, only um, uh, negative things. Yeah, that's that's. I don't know, that's our culture, yeah? So that's why uh, we need to break this rule and um, give uh, more positive things, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, the next one, children are good at giving feedback about different topics on syllabus. What do you think? Yeah, it creates friendly atmosphere, right, Svetlana? Thank you. Okay. Do you think it's false? Children are good at giving feedback about different topics on the syllabus. Mm. Yeah, it has positive impact, I agree. Uh, anyway, it's true. It helps the teacher to identify children's likes and dislikes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I um, When I take a course book, yeah, uh, that has got many topics. I understand that some of the topics are really, um, they are not attractive to my kids or maybe to this particular group. And um, students are great, uh, they are honest, yeah? So they always tell the truth. And uh, if you work in a, um, not uh, not in a state school, yeah, but in uh, the school, yeah, in another school, you can easily skip those uh, topics. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you uh, 
uh, you don't say grammar, for example, yeah, from this unit, yeah, but you can skip the vocabulary if they're not interesting or something like this. Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. So children's uh, feedback is very important for us. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm, the next thing. Using checklists to identify uh, progress in language distracts children when they are working. What do you think? In state schools, you are free. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know that. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. So what do you think is it true or false? Yeah, that's false. <laughs> children uh, can be motivated um, by checklists and uh, they quickly become used to uh, to the teacher using checklists and um, assess their knowledge yeah uh, why not why not mm -hmm. good good i agree with you um the next one uh asking the class to rank animals in size from biggest to smallest shows progress in developing cognitive strategies so you remember cognitive strategies we were talking about them at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see your plus is true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so children need uh, to think abstractly about the size of different animals. Yeah, to so consider an order from large to small. So that's a good task and uh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, sometimes they don't even understand uh, what is bigger, an elephant, for example, or a hippo, yeah? Uh, so we have to uh, give them opportunity to develop their cognitive skills during the language task. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, doing a color dictation shows learners' achievement in reading skills. So what do you think? Is this true or false? Uh -huh. Reading skills, pay attention. Doing a color dictation shows learner's achievement in reading skills. Of course, if uh, these instructions are written, <laughs> yes, they could be about reading skills, but usually if you work with young learners, you understand that uh, usually they listen and they color, yeah? So it's uh, more about listening and uh, recognition of some target language, yeah, so it depends on the picture, maybe uh, target language such as colors or clothes or um, some object toys, maybe, yeah. So, yeah, this statement is true because uh, it's more about listening, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one. Asking children to review their work before handing it in, handing it in gives feedback on progress in language learning. Somebody has to tell more about color dictation. Mm -hmm. One second. Yeah, after this slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you think it's false? You don't give your students a chance to <laughs> find the mistake? <laughs> now, this statement is true. Uh, I always ask the children to review their work, yeah, to look at it again, to look at your test again, uh, because um, we have to teach them uh, when they uh, read, uh, reread, re yeah, recheck uh, their uh, work, and uh, it gives them chance to find the mistakes and to correct the mistakes. That's something that I can't do when I do some writings, my personal writings. I cannot read them again. Uh, for me, that's a problem. Well, nobody taught me to do this. So I have a friend who is checking everything that I do, my presentations, my poems, everything. You understand? Uh, that's, um, that's awful. So that's why we have to teach young learners to, um, to develop these skills. It's very important. Yes, this statement is true. Right. Um, repetition is the priority for young learners. Yeah, that's true. I agree. So uh, you asked uh, about... Um, uh, color dictation. Uh, so that's the thing that is taken from uh, Cambridge Wiley uh, exam. Uh, 
uh, but I use it uh, very often with different pictures uh, in our course books, even if uh, this particular group is not preparing for Cambridge exam this year, for example. Yeah, uh, this is this is the nice thing. Uh, you can work with an open, it can work with an open class or even in pairs or in mini groups. Um, I just take any picture from the course book when you have activity book, yeah, black and white book, um, and uh, you say like listen and color the picture. And when we do color and dictations, I usually uh, have a conversation with kids. For example, I say like, uh, okay, look at the picture. You can see uh, the park, and here are my friends. Uh, can you see uh, Lily? She has got long black hair and they say oh yes my students yeah answer oh yes we can see lily and i say okay color her jacket purple yeah and they color it purple or sometimes they say okay can you see jim uh who is uh, riding a bike and they say yes um and i and i uh name the person like for example you or uliana yeah what do you think what color is his bike yeah and she says green yeah so and everybody color is green colors uh, the by green. So that's a nice thing uh, to practice listening. Of course, they listen to you, uh, um, the teacher, yeah? Uh, but that's the thing you can also do in groups. Um, you put your students into mini groups or in pairs, and they do the same, yeah? So they give uh, simple instructions. But before you uh, give them, before you, give them freedom yeah in the start uh you have to model so they have to get used to what you are saying yeah how how you are making the conversation okay that's it well and uh the next and i think the last one so we are going to the end yes right uh so focus of assessment learning uh, so what do you think what are the focuses of uh, assessing what should we pay attention um what should we take into account? Okay. What are our focuses of assessing young learners? Mm -hmm. Language progress, fantastic. Curiosity, maybe. I would say motivation. Mm -hmm. Evaluation. Correct answers, speaking and listening, performance, skills. Mm -hmm. How far students do the activity, for example? Uh -huh, maybe. Yeah, the vowels, the cognitive skills, motivation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So here is the list of all uh, of the focuses. Of course, it's language. We are doing with language. Uh, their behavior. This uh, about everything, even about their, uh, uh, somebody told about time, yes, yeah? so how much time do they spend on something, yeah? and how do they interact with each other. Children's use of cognitive strategies, you were right, children's use of learning strategies, motivation and attitude. So by attitude, uh, we understand the attitude to language, the attitude to the atmosphere in the classroom, uh, because it's very important, yeah? Not just come to the classroom to see the teacher and uh, have a lecture, but also uh, to have and find friends there, okay? So I move it quickly and then we skip the task. Um, um, I think uh, uh, after the webinar, I can share all the links so you can find me on WordWallNet. Uh, you can find my account and steal all the uh, tasks for TQT Wiley test. Um, what are the ways of acting on assessment evidence? So what do you think, how we teachers can act? So what can we do? Uh, motivation, not clear, like what can we do motivation? Motivate them, how? Observation, right? Mm -hmm. Feedback, yeah, perfect, sure. Example, create a task, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, support, comment, playing games, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Reflection, sure. Uh huh. 
fell down and hit back. I love it. Okay. Right. Uh, I put here the main things that you, which you can find in most of the books. So they are adjusting task type, uh, adjusting classroom management. Uh, when you have uh, several groups, yeah. Um, not all of the classroom rules work for uh, all of the uh, groups, yeah. For some groups it works, for another group it will never work. Uh, adjusting teaching materials, yeah. So maybe I, you know, I have got one group of young learners who love sitting. So when we start playing games and say like, stand up, we are doing this. They're like, okay, like old. Uh, as I always say like, oh, you are old. Uh, people, yeah, they start, uh, oh no, please do not play. So they love sitting and they love writing and they love this. And this is the group, yeah? So you see, 10, 8-year-olds, they love sitting and doing the task. This is the first time I have the group like this because the rest of my groups are uh, noisy. They cannot sit, yeah? They sit for 15 minutes and then they stand up and we're dancing, we're playing, we're moving, we're miming. This is the, and it was really difficult for me. So I had to adjust uh, my teaching materials and classroom management for this particular group, yeah, because uh, all my previous rules, they didn't work with them. Um, so giving oral formative feedback in class, uh, giving written uh, formative feedback in class, and reviewing areas of uh, learning, yeah. Uh, giving written formative feedback in class. Do you always use it? I think we're going to talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move quickly because I see we have 10 minutes left uh, and then we need some time for questions. Uh -huh. So again, I have got some uh, statements. Uh, just quickly, let's discuss uh, what kind of, uh, come back, uh, what um, um, type of uh, acting uh, teachers acting on assessment evidence it is. So again, remember, adjusting task types, adjusting classroom management, teaching materials, giving uh, oral feedback, written feedback, and reviewing areas, okay? Let's quickly do this thing. Uh, the level of language in the reading task was too high, so I simplified some grammar and omitted difficult vocabulary. So what is it? Uh, is it adjusting task types, classroom management, teaching materials, uh, oral feedback, mm -hmm. task type, right, right, yeah, mm -hmm. perfect, well done. Okay, the next one. Uh, the group were noisy as they left the classroom, so the next time I finished a bit earlier and let them leave in pairs after answering a vocabulary question. What is it? Mm -hmm. Classroom management, yes, sure, right, uh-huh. Yeah, classroom management, perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the idea is great, by the way. Oh, you know, I had um, some years ago, I had a nice group of uh, six year olds and they were really noisy. Uh, so before uh, we finished the class, we had 10 minutes, a 10 minute talk to the teacher. Uh, I had the box of candies, so uh, that time, mm, we used candies and uh, they came to me and they had to answer three questions. Uh, so they made a line, like a train, uh, one by one, and they were really, really quiet because they were listening to all the questions. Maybe I will ask them uh, too, yeah? And uh, if they answered all my three questions, they were able to choose a candy uh, of a special color that they wanted to take. Uh, you can do the same with the speaker. Nowadays, uh, I use stickers more than candy. Uh, the next one, I put a positive comment on workbooks or worksheets with a suggestion of something to improve. So what do you think? How many students were in this group? There were like 10, I think. I have big groups, like 10, 10, 12. Yeah, so this is the written feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, talking about young learners, uh, some years ago I thought like, what can we write on the, the uh, paper? Uh, anyway, we can write a lot. Uh, so I usually draw uh, happy faces. I usually uh, write well done. And um, we have some rules. Like for example, if my students uh, make 
a mistake in uh, dictation, uh, they have to write uh, this word 20 times in their copybook, for example. <laughs> or maybe they write three lines of this word in their copybook. And uh, if they have mistakes, I just put remember three lines. Yeah? So the word with the mistake, uh, they have to uh, then um, write uh, three lines of them in the uh, uh, workbook. Yeah, so that's a kind of a way of error correction. Uh, the next one, I often play a guessing game such as 20 questions or I spy with my little eye to practice vocabulary and speaking. What is it? Yes, smiley faces will work, sure. Sure, and yes. Okay, so what is it? So uh, I will remind you, so we had task type, classroom management, teaching materials, oral feedback, written feedback, or reviewing area. Mm, oral formative feedback. I often play guessing games such as 20 questions by with my thoughts to practice the cable and speaking. It's reviewing, it's not about feedback at all. Yeah, so you do not give any feedback you let your students review the material, yeah? Okay. Do you play a spy with my little eye? I think it's a very uh, popular game. I usually put the piece of paper like this, and I say like, ooh, I have a very nice cube. I spy with my little eye something with the letter E. Yeah, and they do the same. <laughs> okay, right, fantastic. So we did well. Um, and now it's time to finish. Uh, so I hope that I was useful. Uh, I know that's a big topic to talk about and we can talk about it for ages. Uh, so what we should remember, there are four main parts uh, of the test uh, of TKTYL test. Uh, language, uh, well, part one about characteristics, part two about lesson planning, part three about uh, teaching strategies and so on, and assessing uh, the part of uh, about assessment. Uh, don't forget that there is a very nice website, cambridgeenglish.org, and there are two wonderful books that I love very much. So the first one is by Cambridge Teaching Language to Young Learners, and the second one is my wonderful one, uh, teaching young learners English. Unfortunately, it's not Cambridge, but you can also order this and buy it. So they are wonderful, and uh, they uh, help. They will, I'm sure, they will help you to prepare for the exam. But they also give lots of practical things for your real classes, not only theory, but lots of practice. Um, here you can see. Uh, Again, uh, oh, oh yeah, here you can see uh, everything about the books, yeah? Uh, you can have a screenshot if you want. <laughs> okay, and uh, if you have any questions about young learners, uh, because I mostly work with young learners, I don't have adult or teenage groups, um, you can uh, write me on my email, or you can find me on Instagram, so not a long time ago, I made my page where I tell everything about work, and my name is Chigrinova Aliona. You can find it over there. Uh, so please, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, yeah, you can find me on Facebook or, Insta or Instagram. Um, Sometimes I just post videos from my classes, and uh, you can follow uh, me and steal some ideas. Um, yeah. So that's it. If you have any questions, let's check the question box. Uh, uh, by the way, I didn't. Uh, what book will you recommend for self-learning TKT? Yeah. So, uh, Yulian, that was the book uh, that uh, I read to prepare, and I sometimes read now to refresh my knowledge. Uh, there are two books uh, which are really good for for preparing for. Um, for your Wiley classes, not only for TKT. Uh, they have uh, lots of things, uh, lots of examples, practical things, and theory, of course. Okay? And a handbook for teachers, just study it before you start. Okay? So, any more questions? Okay. Chat box, check it. 
okay, thank you very much for participation. You were wonderful. So can you recommend a course for teachers to learn how to prepare kids for Cambridge exams? Um, Tatiana, I don't have any courses, but I uh, very often give uh, we uh, webinars about uh, Cambridge exam preparation. And uh, if you find me on Instagram, uh, I will, you will see that I can share some links for my webinars because uh, I have lots of things and I'm creating board games for exam preparation. Moreover, <laughs> yes, and uh, by the way, on Saturday I have a webinar about board games where I'm going to talk about some of them, uh, but uh, I also have a very nice one, Cambridge Task. Uh, is there a special TQLE book from Cambridge like for us? No, unfortunately they don't have it. Uh, but you know, if you download all of the test sample papers and teach and uh, train training notes, uh, you will find lots of things there. I use them uh, to prepare for this session to tell you uh, some uh, parts here, yeah? and you can easily use the same thing. Okay, some more questions I see. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions, just put them quickly. Um, oh, thank you. Wonderful, oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so thank you. I think I should say goodbye now. I don't know, Julia, are you going to say goodbye or just uh, finish the webinar?